Father, in the name of Jesus Christ and in Christ, I come to you and I thank you for your people, for this house, for the pastor, the leadership, the musician, the singers, everything that we are open for praise and worship. We are open for service to you, for this body. And now I commit myself into your hands that you will lead and guide me, that your Holy Spirit, Lord, will move among us. Help now in the name of Jesus, Father. We, your people, take authority now over all the works of the enemy. Right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I put my life in your hands, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, I'm hoping today, I'm going to probably in my glasses, so you find me put, taking them off and putting them on. Um, today, I want to speak to you about why we shout and praise. And part one, this is part one, part two will be coming some other time. Part one, we shout and praise because of Jesus Christ and his blood. That's part one. And we're going to start our scripture reading, Colossians 1, 20 to 22. The Bible says here, And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you, that is us, Gentiles, that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now has he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable an unreprovable, that means unaccused, blameless, in his sight, blood. I knew about the blood, I believed in the blood, but in preparing this message, I really have seen a new power and importance of the blood. A lot of what I'm going to be saying here this morning, you know, we know. But I want us to make it real and let it make changes in your lives. This is what it has done for me. Now, blood must be poured out for sin to be remitted. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remittance of sin. Blood is so important. Exodus 29 12 says, Moses was saying, or rather, um, to Aaron, I think, the Lord was saying, Thou shalt take of the blood of the bullock. Now, the bullock that uh, they brought to the priest when the people sinned, when the whole congregation sinned. He said, You shall take of the blood of the bullock and put it upon the horns of the altar with your finger and pour all the blood besides the bottom of the altar. So Jesus' blood was also poured out as an offering for sin at the bottom of the cross in the ground. In John 19.34, the Bible says, But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith immediately came there out blood and water. Now you know, I never gave this thought this way, but thank God for that soldier's spear. Thank God. What if that blood remained in him? What if it did? Thank God for the soldier's spear. And so his blood was poured out at the bottom of the cross as the sin offering was poured out at the bottom of the altar. You see, they could not break his leg. God would allow so much, and that's it. Don't break him. Don't break his leg. Pierce his side. Let the blood flow. But don't, don't, don't. And I thank God for the soldier's spear. And look at the accomplishment of his blood. Again, I say you know it. But let us make it real. Number one, God purchased us. Saints, God purchased you. I like to say you, I mean me too, but when I say you, you know, I want to, I'm speaking directly to my brothers and sisters whom I love. God purchased you. Acts 20, 28 
Paul was speaking to the elders. And he says, take heed therefore unto yourselves. He's telling them, be careful. And to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers, to feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. Two things here. Number one, the church, this is a little strange, but it is true. The church is so important that the church is not called the church of Jesus Christ. Now, you wouldn't see it. It is called the church of God. And Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the head of the church. You are important. Take heed. Be careful. Feed the church of God. The second thing is, which he has purchased with his own blood. God's blood. God's blood. God's blood that was poured into Jesus Christ. Yes, it was a man. He was a man. He became man. But the blood was so pure. God's blood. Not mixed with any taint, with any human blemish. He said his own blood. And God purchased you. Things. You belong. Hear me. You belong. Get excited. We belong. God owns us. We belong. You know, when I was a young man and I backslid in my half sinful state, and I had my girlfriend, who is my wife now, I was proud, you know. I wanted to buy two jerseys, one for me and one for her. And my own would say, she is mine. And hers would have said, I am his. <laughs> the fact of the matter is this. We love to belong. And I'm saying to you this morning that you have worth. God owns you. God owns us. We are his. We are his. We are his. And it means something to me. Let it penetrate. Let it penetrate you. Praise the Lord. We belong. And Colossians 1, 20, 20, I'll read it again. He says, having made peace with his blood. But the, the bottom of that, he says, and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now has he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy, unblameable, and unreprovable. You get that? Children of God, let's get ready. Let's get real to present us holy, unblameable, unreprovable. That's why the Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ. This is why we rejoice. This is why we make noise. There is reason to be glad and to be happy because of the blood. So number one, like I said, you were purchased. Number two, we are justified. Justified is a means to render righteous. And Romans 5 and 9 says, Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. We ought not to worry at all about him. But I never honestly, seriously paid that much attention to blood. And when Pastor Mickey talked last week about the blood, and he really hit it. Now, I had the message before. I said, wow, the blood. How important is the blood? Justified by the blood. Number three, we are redeemed. Ephesians 1, 7 says, in him we, were, we have redemption, which is liberation, Procured by the payment of a ransom. Through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Again, through the blood, we are redeemed. Number four, we are sanctified. 
That means we are dedicated or consecrated unto God. We are sanctified. We cannot mix with the world. We cannot, we cannot, we should not. We are set apart by the blood, by the blood. We are special people. We are unique in this world. We are different. In Hebrews 13, 12, it says, Therefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate. And these three, justification, redemption, and sanctification, they come in one package, which is us. Oh, praise the Lord. That's why we sing and shout. Because of his blood, we can boldly enter the holiest. Now, that needs a little bit of research, and Pastor Mickey is good at doing research. Research the holy of holies, the holiest. A place where only the high priest could have gone at a certain time, dressed specially. Not any and anybody and in any time. But Hebrews 10, 19 and 22 says to us, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest. Oh my God. Think about it. Having boldness to enter the most holy place. By the blood of Jesus. The blood. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. You are not a worm. You are not a beast. You are not a, you know, and an, an nobody. Full assurance if you are covered by the blood. If you have accepted Christ. If the blood has been applied to you, you can enter boldly. Like Sister you just was praying this morning. She entered boldly. I heard her pray. She said, God, when your children call, you give them this, you give them that. We are calling. That is bold. We can enter boldly. Amen. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. In other words, your conscience, you know, and our bodies washed with pure water. The blood. Now, look at the power and importance of blood. I'm going to take a time to read this. Exodus 12, I'm going to read it verse 1. No, verse 21. Because God had told Moses to get, tell the people to kill a lamb, the Passover, you know the story. Right. So verse uh, 12, 21 says, Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Pick out and take lambs for yourselves according to your families and kill the Passover lamb. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop Dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the house, the door of his house, until morning. For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you. Now hear this. There ought to be no compromise. You could be Jew or not Jew. The blood had to be on the door. Ah, you, could, you could tell God how wonderful you have been, how saintly you have been. The blood had to be on the door. An Egyptian could have come into a Jewish house and be safe because the blood was on the door. There's no compromising. If God says, put the blood on the door, put the blood on the door, else you're going to die. The Lord speaks about repent and be baptized. And there are many Christians, many believers who have repented and they have not been baptized. Repent and be baptized. Put the blood on the door. Obey the word of God. There is no compromising. Repent and be baptized and you shall be saved. How many of you that are saved today or believe in Jesus Christ and you're not baptized? Let me see by the wave of your hands. Come on, be bold. Let me see by the waving of your hand. You believe, but you're not baptized. Praise the Lord. One brother, 
We have a candidate pastor for baptism. He says, repent and be baptized. He says, put the blood on the door. Now, couldn't the Lord, couldn't God know who the good people were? Huh? Couldn't, I mean, just cannot, can God not see who the good people were? Hmm? What's with blood? What's with blood? Why did he request that? I don't know, but he requested it. We don't have to question God. We just have to obey God. Hmm? Does blood glitter or sparkle? Huh? Blood on the door in the nighttime. And I'm sure they didn't have electric lights in those days. How did they see the blood? It don't matter. The power of blood will penetrate darkness. The power of blood would save souls and save lives. Blood. The blood. And regardless of who you were, if you were in a house with the blood on the door, you were saved. Regardless of who you are today, if you are in this house, the house of God, with blood of Christ, you are safe. Regardless of what's happening. When I, in about 1998, 1999, after I had come back to God and repented so many times, Satan troubled me. He brought my past constantly. You see, I grew up in church. I only knew church. And when I became a teenager, I left church and I started to curse and drink and smoke. And I remember my mother was passing right where my mother is passing to go to church up the road. We were playing in a band house. We were playing music. She said she saw me with a cigarette in my mouth and the guitar in my hand. She almost fainted. I hurt God. I hurt my mother. I backslid. I did. The only thing I didn't do is what I couldn't do or what I didn't get to do. Serious. I used to tell people I'm not going by the books. I messed around even with prostitutes. I didn't even know what I was doing. I did whatever the sinners were doing. I did. And so Satan brought this thing back to me. And it wouldn't leave me. And one day I went on my knees in my second son's room. I always get inspiration in that room. What we were in Long Island at the time. My second son. And I went down before God on my knees and I cried out to God. I feel guilty. I cannot get free. And the Lord brought me back to this story. And the Lord said to me, when Israel came out from Egypt and they entered into the wilderness, going to the promised land, he said, whatever they did back there in Egypt, the worst of them in Egypt, the wickedest of them in Egypt, they got through the blood and they are here in the, in, in the wilderness and Egypt cannot touch them. Egypt has no hold on them. Praise the Lord. My past had no hold on me. This is why I sang this morning. I went one day to God and he showed me the blood. Egypt, they couldn't send police after them. Regardless of what this boy had done, the eldest son might have been a criminal, a crook, but he was in the house and he was now away from Egypt. Satan couldn't touch him. He was safe. And God said to me, son, the blood, the blood has saved you. And I got delivered. It was about 1999 there, but I, I mean, I was in my 20s. Around that time. No, don't, don't get your calculator. <laughs> now, I said I was in my 20s. I didn't tell you which 20, yeah? I've been through about three 20s already, going on the fourth. So, in one of them. Oh, praise the Lord for the blood, the blood. Oh, saints. Oh, rejoice. Oh, God, the blood. And it is because of whose blood it is. The blood of God. Whose blood it is. Hmm? And how do we apply the blood? You know, back to Ephesians 1 7. 
The Bible says, in him we have redemption. You see, this is what God was telling me. You were bought, son. You were purchased by the blood. And if you are having a problem today with your past, listen to me. You have confessed. and You have done all that you can do. And Satan is coming after you. Take a hold of the blood of Christ. If you could make amends, make amends. If you did wrong and you could make amends, I have to make amends, but sometimes you can't do anything about it. Hmm? The person is dead and gone. The blood remains. Rise up in the name of Jesus. Now, how do you apply the blood of Christ? The Bible says God told him to take his up. Now, the experts and the theologians will tell you what hyssop is. I think hyssop, Pastor, is a, it's just a little bush, something that everybody can get. Hyssop. Take hyssop and apply the blood. And I heard one of my old time teachers, and he was Derek Queen, says, hyssop for us is the word or are the words that we speak. You apply the blood by confessing, like Pastor Biggie was saying this morning confessing what the blood has done. I am redeemed. I am sanctified. I am bought. I am. I am. That's the hyssop. Your mouth, your word, your tongue. Use your hyssop and apply the blood when the devil comes against you. That is how the blood was applied. Why should we shout and praise? Because of the blood. We're okay. The second reason why we should shout and praise in this part one of my message is because of Jesus, the Savior. Now, let me take a little time to just talk a little bit about Jesus. I know we know about Jesus, but when I consider Jesus, there is no body, no, there's no, there, there's, there's, there's no comparison. Like this song that they normally sing. It's such a beautiful song. I can't even, you know. So there's no comparison. And there's no comparison to, I want to use the word Christianity, but it's kind of a, I don't like that word anymore because of what people have made it. But the body of Christ, the saints, there is no comparison with this religion, the religion of Jesus Christ. There is no comparison. We have African religion. We have Haitian religion. We have different cultural religion. Now, I went to a funeral some time ago, and it was a Hindu funeral. And I look around me, and it was definitely cultural. Almost everybody looked the same. And I started feeling my hair to see if uh, maybe I, I'm, I'm sitting there and, you know, but... I, the religion of Jesus Christ, he says, whosoever will may come. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever will. The religion of Jesus Christ, it is, cannot be compared. And by the way, the two most wonderful people I've met, seriously, were Hindus. The woman who passed away, and another gentleman who has a store up the street. You're talking about quiet, wonderful people? I wish Christians could be quiet and wonderful like that. The only two Christians I see like that, the only two, is Brother Cecil, <laughs> Cecil Cordner, and Brother Albert Torres. I've not met Christians so quiet and even me, forget my wife, even me. <laughs> but praise God, we have the blood. But these people were so, you know, you know, they're so calm and quiet and wonderful. But anyway, the point I want to make is this, that the, 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 the Jesus religion is so unique. Unique. For all the world, for everybody. Everybody. Think about it, that everybody could become a son of God, a child of God, everybody. It is wonderful. It is what? It is awesome. Anybody. You could be walking bare feet with no clothes. You come to Christ. You become his. You become bought. So who was Jesus? Who was this Jesus? 
In Colossians uh, chapter 1, verse 15, the Bible says, He was the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. In Colossians 1, 16, the Bible says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether there be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. He was before everything. That is the Jesus Christ who died for us, the maker of all things. Think about the religion that we belong to. And he is before all things. And by him, all things consist. Now, I have a little news for you that I can't give you now because I don't have time to, to, to get into it. But Jesus Christ was the son of God. He was the son of God. He came from the bosom of God. Everything was poured into him. He shared nothing, not even his death. Peter thought he could have shared his death with him. He couldn't. Jesus is alone. The son of God. The only son of God. And the Bible says in Colossians 2.9, In him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. All the fullness of God dwelt in him bodily. He is the one who died for us, saints. He is the one who saved us. He is our savior. The Bible says the first man was of the earth, earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Where did he come from? Heaven. I know he was put into Mary's womb. Don't get sidetracked. He came from heaven. He was implanted there. He was implanted there. He was put there. The word became flesh. The Bible says, look who God used. Look who God used. Hmm? And in Romans 3.25, the Bible says that God set him forth as a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that were passed. He is and was the one who saved us. Hmm? That is why we shout. That is why we praise. Now, I'm going to come back now to the body of Christ. No, the body, the, the church. Going back to Acts 20, 28, where Peter said, I mean, where Paul was saying, Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. And by the way, the pastors were made pastors by the Holy Ghost. It was not by a college. It was not by some association. By the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. Take heed, he says. To feed the church of God. Which he has purchased with his own blood. His blood. Note. It was the church of God. I'm going to tell you something now. I just said that the church was not the church of Jesus Christ. It was the church of God. Now the Bible says here, know ye not that you are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in you. Hear me. That is 1 uh, Corinthians 3, 16 to 17. I'm going to leave out the rest of it. In 1 Corinthians 3 and 9, it says we are laborers together with God. I mean the apostles. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. I want to make a final point here. We are, you are the temple of God. Your body is not the temple of God. Listen carefully, and it's very important. Your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is shed abroad and each and every one of us have the Holy Spirit. You are the temple. God has one temple. One building. Check it out in the Bible. One temple where all the saints of God are built together. 
and become that temple that God dwells in. I'm going to say it again. Your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You, we are the temple of God. The reason why it is important is because I find it a little bit disturbing sometimes how we treat other believers and other churches. There is one foundation, the apostles and the prophets. There is one cornerstone, Jesus Christ. There is one building, all of us together as bricks coming together to make that one building, to be, to be the church of God, the temple of God that he dwells in us. We are the temple of God. God has no other temple. In AD 70, the Jewish temple was destroyed. Since then, God lives in his temple, the church. What is the church? All of us, all the churches, everyone who calls on God through Jesus Christ. I'll give you another shocker. One time I was going to hell. I always go to hell. And I was praying and I was seeking God. Long story short, God used a Catholic priest to give a message in a Catholic church. And one of the Catholic members called me, gave me a straight word. When I say straight, you cannot get it more straight from God. Delivered me. Since then, I've been delivered. You hear what I'm saying? Because of a Catholic priest. I want us to rise, rise from our bigotry, rise, rise from our closeness, our closed up and just right. Let the Holy Spirit lead, man. You don't know who is right and wrong all the time. There is wrong in all of us. There is right in all of us. Only Jesus Christ is right and his blood, his blood is able. Oh my God, sometimes you see people and you don't know. You don't know what they've been through or what they're going through. You don't know and all they're depending on. Is the mercy of God. And they're clinging, they're clinging like this woman with the issue of blood. They're clinging, clinging. And we're putting them down and putting them out. But the temple of God is one. The foundation is one. According to Sister Nilifer, you say you can't build a skyscraper now. What she say again? A scrap heap or something like that. Your foundation must be right. Yeah, your foundation must be right. You can't have another foundation. And so, we have to be very careful. We have to be careful about our body, this body, this church. We have to be careful about other churches. But I will talk about this church now, us. Thank God for those of you who maintain this church. Thank God for Pastor Ma who kept it going all through COVID. I remember when I left the church and I... My brother, I pulled him out and we played, you know, we played all sort of fool and we had a band and my brother told me, my mother, she said one day, she said, Mikey, get the boys and come and play some music for me now, just, you know. We didn't have television in those days, a little radio. We were playing all over the place and she said, get the boys and come and play some music because she knew we could play Christian music too. And I don't think he did it. I was away when he told me that. She's calling, get the boys and Come and play. Come and play. And I'm saying, God Almighty, he called to Israel at one time. He said, oh, he said, he said, how oh, often, oh, Jerusalem, God heart hurts when he cannot see his people. He said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets. He said, how oh, often would I have gathered you? How oh, often? And my mother said, get the boys and come. And daddy is saying, where, where are you? Where, where are our men? Where, where, where are our dancers? Where are our praisers? Where are our people? Where are our worshippers? Where are our givers? And daddy is calling. Come back to the church. I want you to send this video to those who have left us. Who should not have left. Sometimes we leave because we're serving ourselves. We're disgruntled. We're unhappy. We don't like what's going on. But God didn't send us out. We left like the prodigal son. And we feed in on the pig food. And we believe it is nourishing. But it is not. And God is saying come back. Come back to what you knew. 
you used to do, you used to be. Come back to who you are. I'm glad to see the singers and the musicians. Uh, when I was coming up Thursday, I, you know, I, I just was thinking that when I got here and I saw them working and practicing and giving the, 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 the themselves uh, to the service of God. And I'm saying there are people who just take it lightly. Take it lightly. Come back. Come back to God's house. Come back to service. You don't have to like everything. Everything doesn't have to please you. But God is always pleased with you through his son and in his son. Come back. Come back. And tell those who have gone. It's okay if they have gone with a direction from God. That's good. Sometimes you have to do that. I moved out from New York and I came here. And I wouldn't move from here except God sends me someplace else. I don't have to be totally comfortable. I just have to be loving and serving God. Come back. Come back. Something was broken. Come and help us fix it. Come and help us fix it. You can see sometimes what we cannot see. Something is going wrong. You take up the challenge. And you do something and build the house of God. And support those who are laboring. Like Minister Simon and his group on Thursday. And this morning they were there. And when I left them on Thursday, I saw Sister Becky there with the children. And I said, well, you know, what happened? And she said, Nilifer is dropping her home. Nilifer lives somewhere over there, right? Sister Becky lives somewhere on the other side. Maybe if one of you were in the choir from the other side, Nilifer wouldn't have that problem. We need people, saints. We need people in the house of God to glorify God, to strengthen the house of God, to encourage each other. That's what the Bible says. Do not neglect the assembling of yourselves together. In the name of Jesus Christ, come back. Come back in your minds. Come back in your spirits. Come back in your joy. And give God praise and give God thanks. And those of you, if you are here and you're running from something somewhere, if you're running, maybe God is leading you here, that's good. But check your heart and your conscience and see, if you're running, you better go back to, to where you came from. Because God is building his house brick by brick, congregation by congregation. Let us serve God and not ourselves. In the name of Jesus Christ, may God bless you. Amen. Pastor Mickey.